Hello, welcome to round one. Um, we're on the draw with a kind of sketchy hand. Um, just the Shafet Dunes and a bunch of red two drops. Uh, I think we need to mulligan this hand. Ugh. Okay, so here we have two very good Steward of Solidarities. Um, and Firebrand Archer plus the Dagger, but we need to draw a Plains for this hand to be any good. But I think with the Scry plus two draw steps, it's pretty likely that we can find it. Um, and going to five is just so bad in like a aggressive throw your creatures at your opponent type deck, so I'm gonna keep, this could be wrong, um, especially <laughs> with Cartouche on top of the library, but I think going to five is much riskier. But again, this definitely could be the wrong play, and I think maybe maybe mulliganing was correct. But I guess we'll see which which one would work better. Wall of Forgotten Pharaohs is pretty good against us. Okay, well that's the perfect draw. Um, we can play. Which creature do we lead with? Probably Steward of Solidarity. I just want to start making an army. Uh, this is pretty loud, sorry. Um, I just want to start making an army and then Shafet Dunes can really take over the game. So if they don't kill it then we're in a really good position, because then we can just play another one. And then we're just making a 1-1 one -one every turn. So this wall can slowly ping us. I guess we're playing the mirror match. That's the part I don't like about these leagues is like, I drafted red-white, so I shouldn't be playing against someone with the same colors. Um, I'm sure there's someone with the same colors, but it should be much less likely. But with the draft league, there's just no way to tell. It's especially bad in like cube draft when you're like playing the show and tell deck, and your opponent happens to be playing show and tell as well. Okay, third land is actually pretty nice because now we can have Jero's resolve up. Um, I think we're just going to play another steward. We're just going to keep making tokens. These cards seem good. And now we have... I guess we need one more white, but then we can start using the Shafet Dunes. So, given enough time, we will win this game. It looks like my opponent disconnected. Okay, they're back. Okay, so we play this. Um, what I'm thinking about doing, and I don't know if this is right, is they're going to attack with the initiate. I think... I think I might block, exert my Steward of Solidarity, Jairus resolve it back, block the Initiate, and then exert it again to make more tokens. Wow, they're on just mono walls. I think I'm going to make that play. It has a pretty high upside, and then embalming him takes their whole turn, and I can attack for quite a bit next turn. Yeah, so I block first. Exert this to make a token. Jairus resolve, untap. Perfect. And it prevents all damage, okay. Okay, so we traded one mana for three, and we got a free untap. And I think I'm just going to make another token.
So here, um, we can just keep making tokens. Um, the dagger, unfortunately, doesn't let our tokens trade with the walls. Um, I think I'm just going to land this Defiant Kenra. And the reason I'm playing it instead of a Nefcrop Entangler is in, in case my opponent has the um, one man or one damage to all creatures your opponent control, I don't want to get completely blown out. So I'm, I'm keeping my one toughness creatures back. And no point in attacking with the warriors because they have two blockers. But next turn we should have three warriors and then we can start getting in. Interesting that they're not eternalizing the unwavering initiate, but we're gonna make another token. Okay, planes is very good. Now we can make two plays. And I think just making tokens with these guys is better than attacking. Because um, they have walls that are going to block. And I want to attack before I do anything else because this not embalming the unwavering initiate is kind of suspicious. Huh. No place. I think I'm going to go Archer plus Dagger. Um, this does one to their face, and it gives me a creature back in case things go too south. And this dagger is going to be pretty helpful later on. Sure. No place. So weird. They, I mean, they know they have that in their graveyard, right? Okay, maybe they just forgot about it? That's quite strange. So, making another token. Oh, these guys have Vigilance too, I didn't even notice that, that's very strong. Ooh, Bloodlust Insider is good. So I'm gonna equip Dagger to... I think it's more important to equip it to one of these guys. So I think the Defiant Kenra. Um, if I ever draw another land, my opponent's just dead. So, quick combat. Attack, 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 attack. Yeah, seems fine. So, they can eat one of my tokens. And them blocking like this makes me really think that they don't have a board wipe. So I think... I think I'm gonna play out this... Well, yeah, I think I'll play out the Bloodlust Insider. It's committing less, um, because the Nefcrop Entangler obviously is stronger. But if I don't draw land, I can still attack with the Nefcrop, because I can give it haste. <clears throat> and I just by the way they block makes me think they don't have much, because they're trying to keep this guy alive. Um, obviously, I could be wrong. Okay, Dauntless Haven is fine. Any land and we're kind of just doing it. So we're making another token. Ooh, that's perfect. Man, this card is so brutal. And we can give it haste. <laughs> Yeah, so I think we're going to kill the Unwavering Initiate, and it's really hard for them to come back from that. Man, this deck is really good. Okay, so we kill that. Uh, yes, I will. Uh, you gain haste. So my opponent's at 11, they can block. 
um, here, here, and here, and take one, two, three, four, five, six. So I think I'm just going to keep making tokens. Actually, let's see. They hit me for one, two, three, four. So I'm down to eight. And then they can do this for two down to six. Um, do they die? Let's see. They block here, here, and here. They take one, they're down to ten. Okay, so that's still not lethal. So I think I'm gonna attack like this. And make more tokens. Sandblast is fine. Them spending three mana to kill just a 2 2 is very good for me. And they only have one card in hand. And really no good box with this Dauntless Haven. Yep. So they take four, I take two, sure, at the end of that turn. And then next turn, if I don't draw land, I can go Nefcrop Entangler, Equip Dagger, and Exert for five, Trample. Um, and if I do draw land, then <laughs> my team is huge. So either way, I think I'm in really good shape. My opponent really needs to draw something good here. I think the only card that could get him out of this is either like a Board Wipe, or the Lava Axe for 6, um, that'd be exactly enough damage. These walls have been quite good for them though. Okay, so... I don't think I'm gonna bring in the Chandra's Defiance, or Chandra's Defeat, because I only saw white creatures. Um, Jero's Resolve seems okay, especially on the draw. But in Oketra's name, I'm glad I have this in instead of the other card. It just seems very good. Also can protect my whole team from the deal one damage to every creature. Um, active Heroism, Jero's Renunciation. Yeah, I don't think any of these are good enough. We're just going to play it like this. Anointed Procession would have been pretty sweet that game. That's for sure, but... I think... I, like I used all of my mana every turn, so it's hard to like say I would have found a turn like a turn to use it. Also, that was on a mulligan to six. I forgot about that. Okay, uh, this hand seems great. Binding mummy, steward of solidarity. This card is very powerful. Okay, now we have a lot of lands. So, depending on what my opponent does, I might not play the steward first. Two mana. I think I'm going to play this Firebrand Archer first. Because um, I'm going to cast non-creature spells next turn, and if they have something like a Magma Spray, I want them to kill my weakest creature. Yeah, oh wow. Yeah, trading Firebrand Archer for a Braid was great there. Still no plays. Um, I think now I want to play Binding Mummy and put Cartouche on it. Well, yeah, if they use the braid, it makes me think they might have something like Open Fire. Hmm. I think I'm gonna wait on this cartouche. It just seems so likely they have a removal. Okay, they did not. Maybe I'm playing too conservative, but you know, if I cartouche up there and then they have open fire, that's a huge blowout for me. Yeah, you can play a camel. It does have lifelink, that's good to know. Um, so now I can play the steward.
cartouche on the binding mummy. Um, and they can't blow me out because they're tapped out. And I think I'm going to keep this binding mummy back. Well, let's see. If they have a removal spell for it, that's pretty bad for me. But let's say like I attack here and then they attack me back. I'm trading I'm doing three damage, but then they just gain three life, and I don't have good block. So I think I'm gonna keep it back for one turn. Um because at after then I can um make a token and then double block the camel. And then at least they only get to attack one time. But if they don't have a way to kill this now, then I'm in pretty good shape. So this looks like a sandblast, but I think I'm okay running into a sandblast. They still don't gain the life. Yeah, that's not so bad for me. <laughs> um, it was gonna get me anyways if I tried double blocking the camel with the token. Okay, Mummy Paramount's nice. So we're gonna do that. I don't think I have any reason to keep lands in hand. But I don't have any reason to play them either. I think I'm gonna play at least this land. Um, attack for one with my token, because it has Vigilance. And then I can keep back I have two warrior tokens and a mummy paramount that can block this camel. And Steward of Solidarity can just single handedly make me a whole desert or a whole team. Hostile desert seems a little sketchy. But not terrible. Yeah, I don't think they want to attack. So we're going to make a token. We will definitely be cycling this desert. <laughs> okay. Um, one, two, three, four. Yeah, there's really no reason to play at land. Um, I don't know if... I don't think it's worth... attacking out here. I think I need to wait till I have more warriors to kill this camel. So, I think I'm just gonna pass turn. Because this steward um, gives me some late game inevitability. Frontline Devastator. That card's pretty good. But now I can maybe get some like blowouts on blocks. Okay, Bloodless Insider is nice. Just another creature to pump with Zeno Catcher's name. Yeah, I think I'm still better off just waiting. <clears throat> My opponent probably blocks with Frontline Devastator. Or attacks, I mean. Which isn't so bad for me. Um, what I'm deciding is if I want to triple block it with the tokens. I need to look up how Afflict works. Will I take six? Uh, one second. Afflict is a keyword ability in Magic the Gathering. Whenever a creature with this ability becomes blocked. Okay, so it's not for each creature, I don't think. And so he's a 3-3 three, three Afflict to... Let's see how much I can do on the backswing. So I make a token, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, I think I'm better off taking it. They can hit me for 
Okay, no pump is a bit scary. Huh. Also, if note if I draw the um, frontline strangler, I can just kill this guy because I have a desert in my graveyard. Vizier Remedies also is okay. It's just a creature to play. Um, I think I'm gonna wait one more turn for my attack. Maybe. A lot of 2-2 two -two Vigilance, 1-1 one -one Bloodlust Insider. You know, how bad can it be? I think I'm just going to attack with this Bloodlust Insider. Um, I don't want to trade this Vizier for the Solitary Camel. So they probably blocked the Insider. Oh. I actually don't even have to play an Oketra's name now. Brute strength, plus 3 plus 1 in games, trample. Okay, so then I can just play in Oketra's name and we trade. That seems okay. What is this? Okay. So now they don't gain the life. And they take a bunch of damage. I think that went okay for me. Now my opponent's at 11. They still have the Solitary Camel, but they lost some pretty good value. Market, I guess, is good. It looks like they're casting that, which means their hand's pretty bad. Yeah. <clears throat> so they discarded just lands. Hone Kopesh is good. Four three lifelink camel. No attacks. Okay, I will play this creature. So yeah, I don't have any good attacks, but I just keep growing my board. If I ever draw that desert <coughs> that pumps my team, we're in really good shape. Um, if I draw the the Strangler who does 3 damage, we're in really good shape. What is this? Oh, True Heart Twins is okay. Wall is okay. Yeah, so they're really not in a good position to attack. Especially with this Bloodlust Insider just threatening to give any creature I draw haste. Sure, another Defiant Kendra. We're just completely flooding the board. And I've been bluffing some kind of combat trick this whole time, which I think is why my opponent's been so cautious. And also the fact that they're 11 against like a million creatures. Sure, another wall. So I think they'll probably attack now with at least the camel. And I will trade for the camel. No, no attacks. Dagger of the Worthy is very nice. I think I'm going to equip the dagger to a Kenra. Yeah, because if they want to kill it, they need to block with either like the camel and it kills any of their walls. How close am I just to killing them? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. They take 4, gain 4, okay. So I think I'm gonna sacrifice this Kenra, probably trade for the Camel. 
but that's totally fine with me. Trading a two drop for one of their best three or four drops, and they still lose one life from the flicked. Yeah, I don't actually know how they're supposed to block. That's a very good trade for me. They lose a life. Sure, I take one. Um, so True Heart Twins is a 4-4. Four, four. I think I'm going to equip this dagger to the Vizier. Or... Because if they attack with a camel, yeah, I'm going to equip it to a warrior just to prevent a camel from attacking. I have enough mana that I can play any spell in my deck and still re-equip the dagger later. And this gives me a lot of inevitability because... Um, they can only block my 1-1 one, one so much. Making the wall a 1-5. Oh, that's pretty good against this dagger. But we're just going to keep going wide. Drawing more lands. So, I guess I'm going to equip to the Kenra. Um, this makes it a 4 power, so they have to block with one of their relevant creatures to trade with it. And if they just block with a wall, they still take 1. So they gain 3 and lose 2, but with the camel gone, I have some pretty good attacks now. Yeah, so re equip dagger to... I guess the vizier? Sure, I take two. So I'm actually getting clocked relatively quickly from these two Wall of Forgotten Pharaohs. But I should find a way to get through pretty soon. Uh, I need to remember my opponent has Hostile Desert active. So when doing math, I don't have lethal if that's still there to block. Wow, that's a lot of lands. Okay, so there's really no good attacks with Vizier. So I think I play land. Um. Do I attack with just all of these? Because now that the camel's gone, they can block and kill two. So the wall would block the Vizier, and the twins would block the Bloodlust Insider. So I think I'm going to move this to just one of the warriors. But I think I should probably just start attacking. My opponent's dead very fast with this kind of clock. Um, yeah, attack with all of these, attack with you, you, and you. And then I can keep making a token every other turn. So they take 5, they go to 7. Re-equip the dagger. Yeah, we take 2. I really just need to draw a non-land card. It's been the theme of this, this game. I think they forgot about the desert, because they really should have activated it.
Also, weird that they killed a token instead of the Bloodlust Insider. I think this card's just strictly better, but... Maybe they wanted to remove my Vigilance threats? What is this? Ah. Well, that still doesn't kill me. They can kill my Steward of Solidarity. That's a very good card though. This doesn't have Trample, right? No. Okay, sure, so I make a token. So I take four. And insult to injury only pumps their damage. If a source you control, okay. So these do two each, so that puts me at four. So I'm dead in two turns. If they attack with True Heart Twins, I'm trying to think if it's worth double blocking it. I don't think it is. And they actually can't even attack the, or use their walls this turn. Okay. So if I double block with these two, I go down to four creatures. Let's see, if I block with one. Um, they have two blockers. They have to take at least one damage, so that's one, one, two, three. So they take four. If I double block, they can only kill one. I think double blocking is better. They have one card in hand, and this removes the threat for a long time. And if they try and get value off these walls, then they're in a lot of trouble, because they have no blockers back. I think they probably should have equipped the Hone Kopesh, then attacked, and then re-equipped. Just my thought. <laughs> okay. Well, we get to cycle. This camel's actually going to be quite good. Uh, mountain... Yeah, I can play, give it haste, and attack. That's great. Give you haste. This lifelink means their plan of um, getting me with the wall of forgotten pharaohs is just not good. And this camel can trade with either of their walls. So five two. I would be throwing away one warrior to do. Well, let's see. If they don't block the camel, they take five. And then they block two, and they go take six, go to one, and they lo I lose one token. If they block the camel with the O4, I think it's better to attack with these as well. Because they have no good blocks. This puts them at one life against an Afflict Dagger. Yeah, that's not a good place to be. So I take two, which doesn't really matter. <clears throat> but they need to gain life this turn or else they're just dead because I have Dagger of the Worthy. Okay, we got there. Great. Uh, another long, drawn-out game, but thanks for watching.